Ready to do this thing? Yeah. All right, 10-4. No bullshit news. Aren't you going to redo that? I didn't get to it. I didn't get to it. It's okay, man. We're in a basement. Lower level. No shame in my game. Lower level. Bring it, motherfucker. I'll break it off of that. No bullshit news. The middle class is dying. And that's why Trump got away. No bullshit news. Welcome to another hour, No Bullshit News with Charlie Dove, Bob Shadowbauer in here. And uh, you're getting tomorrow's news today. 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 We come, we come early. You know that's true. I think it's becoming apparent to everybody. Uh, Karen's back next week. Oh, good. Yeah, I, I miss her, man. I do miss Karen. She lends intellect and class to this dump. That she does. Um, in, in the lower level. Not only will Karen be back next week, but Bob Focano, special guest, Bob Focano, Charlie Leduff. Oh. Definitely tune in. But. Round two? Round, well, I, don't do that. I mean. I mean, come on. No, he's, you know, we're going to we're gonna talk. out of the game. We're talking like, yeah, we're going to talk about the game. Okay. And everybody knows, Bob knows the game. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So, looking forward to that. But uh, before we get going, we're going to take you around the country today from our correspondent in Washington, D.C. to Chicago, here in Detroit. Why don't you cue that up for, uh, for Luke? Luke Nowacki. Big time money, man. Maybe you're a big city official who can travel... With your entourage on the city's dime and on your birthday, your hat is magically packed with C-notes. Or maybe you played high school football with someone connected and can get lucrative contracts to haul and dump sludge, then get lucrative contracts to clean up the disaster that you just created. If you're not among the elite who can make your pockets fat off the taxpayer's back with no shame in your game, there's a good chance that you'll be going to have to provide for your own retirement and theirs. If you have questions regarding whether or not you're on the right track, call Luke Nowacki at 248-663-4748. That's 248-663-4748. Grow your assets. Your politicians are dependent on you for the additional tax revenue. Those navigators don't lease themselves. <laughs> Securities and Investment Advisory Services offered through Royal Alliance Associates, Inc., member FINRA, SIPC. Royal Alliance Associates, Inc. is separately owned and other entities and or marketing names, products, or services referenced here are independent of Royal Alliance uh, Associates, Inc. John Lee Hook. Detroit's... I, I need some money. Detroit's finest. Hey, did you hit the timer, dude? Oh, no, I didn't. I didn't either. You want to hit it? Because we'll go late. Okay. Woo, I like this. Let that go a little bit. That I, I can't, can't use, use. I need, I need money. money. I need money. Yeah. Okay, we're now going to Washington, D.C. We all know the news this week. We're going to Tim Alberta, chief political correspondent for Political Magazine and the No Bullshit News Hour, Capitol Hill correspondent from Brighton, Michigan, the finest we got. Tim, what's up, baby? What's happening, Charlie? Uh, well, Trump, 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 Trump. Let me read this to you. Quote, the investigation did not establish that members of the Trump campaign conspired or coordinated with the Russian government in its election interference activities. Number two. While this report does not conclude that the president committed a crime, it also does not exonerate him. Tim, you're one of the smartest guys I know about politics. What's tomorrow's news today? Well, tomorrow's news today is... God, you're good. <laughs> Look, members of Congress, specifically Democrats, and specifically Democrats on certain key committees, such as government oversight, are going to be digging through every word, every syllable of that Mueller report that they can get their hands on. And, and, and that's the operative phrase, Charlie. It's the ones that they can get their hands on. We have no idea the level of access that, that, that congressional oversight members are ultimately going to be able to get to the original Mueller report, not just the cliff notes, not the annotated version from the attorney general's office. So 
to, to the extent that they are able to access the original report, they will be turning over every rock looking for any piece of dirt that they can find. Because, again, to the second part you just read, they made it clear, the Justice Department made it clear that the president was not found guilty of a crime, but he was also not exonerated of potential wrongdoing. So that leaves uh, just an enormous, an enormous opening for congressional Democrats to drive a truck through here. But again, they're going to be very careful about this because the perception of overreach at this point, you're getting awfully close to the Democratic presidential season getting fully underway with debates and such. They do not need to be seen as helping the president energize his base by overreaching on something as the president is already accusing them of having done. Isn't this, uh, you know, from here out in the, the cornfields from the Rust Belt, isn't this a nothing burger? Don't, don't they risk the chance of overselling this again? You, un you understand what I mean? Like, it, out here, those that voted for Trump feel it was a couple-year campaign of trying to delegitimize their will. And to keep going on with the nothing burger, if he obstructed justice to cover up a non-crime. You see what I'm saying? Isn't it time to let it go and let us know what the Democrats stand for? You look, I, I think if you talk to a lot of the smartest folks in the Democratic Party today, Charlie, they will tell you yes. The answer to that question is unequivocally yes, because look at how Democrats took back the House in 2018. They didn't take back the House by running crazy, wild-eyed, hair-on-fire campaigns coast-to-coast coast calling for impeachment and, 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 and you know, trying to make the entire election a referendum on Trump. If you look at people like in Michigan, Alyssa Slotkin in Michigan 8, uh, Haley Stevens in Michigan 11, these were Democrats who flipped pretty safely held Republican congressional districts by running campaigns that were about health care, that were about jobs, that were about improving the economy, and really campaigns that were about sort of a, a post-ideological approach to Washington. Let's stop with all this bullshit and all this tribalization, and let's bring the parties together and actually try and get some things done. These are not people who who have any inclination or really any reason to believe that there is an incentive, politically or otherwise, in continuing to drag out this, this fight against Trump. On the other hand, look, you do have some senior Democrats in Congress who think, with some justification, that there, that, that there is some, some there there, that even, that even if the president didn't collude, even if his team didn't collude, maybe even if he didn't obstruct justice, that he has committed offenses that would be worthy of impeachment. And, and that is a, that's going to be a tough pill to swallow for some of these Democrats essentially being told, look, we know and we maybe even agree with you that this guy deserves to be impeached based on X, Y, or Z, but we need you to swallow that for right now because, frankly, he's only got 18 months left, you know, 20 months left in his first term. And at this point, our focus needs to be on defeating him in 2020. And anything that takes our eye off of that ball is ultimately detrimental to the party. Thoughts, Bob? Well, I was just, I mean, you know, we, we haven't seen the Mueller report yet, but how much of the, well, we know so much already in just the public reporting about whether it rose to the level of conspiracy to, cons to collude with Russia or not. But, I mean, the Trump Tower meeting, you know, the, his, you know, Donald Trump trying to build his tower in Moscow. I mean, his porno that, payoffs, his porno payoffs, his, but, his but tax it, and it, and stuff. It's, it's all out there in the open. So it's we baked, already know it. It's baked in. Yeah. Right. So, I mean, I, I like the rest of the country want to see the entire Mueller report, but I don't necessarily, I don't necessarily believe Bill, Bill Barr's conclusions that there was no collusion and there was no obstruction because the, the only, you know, uh, uh, phrases that, that he, Bill Barr put in his letter was that, the Mueller report said it doesn't exonerate him. So let's yeah, see yeah. it. We paid for it. Let's see it. Why? Why? Hey, Tim, and this for you, too. Why? Because you know what? Um, think of criminal court. You know what I mean? You get arrested and not, not enough uh, to charge, right? So you're innocent. And a lot of times it gets sealed, right? Jesse Smollett. Yeah. Jesse yeah. Smollett. Well, so here's the, he, uh, here's the thing for, for me, guys, and I think that this is, this is really basic, but it's really central to understanding uh, where some of the fault lines lie here. There is a difference between con, you know, collusion or conspiracy or however you want to think about what the president's critics believe that, that he and his team did. There's a difference between that and an intent 
to do those things. So in other words, when you raise the, the Trump Tower meeting with the Kremlin lawyer, right, like that would strike just about anybody who is fair-minded with a working brain as clearly an intent to try to do something. There, there was an intent there to get dirt on Hillary Clinton from a Russian operative, and that was made clear to Don Jr. in the email, and he was excited about it. So that is intent. But again, intent is not execution. You can intend to commit a crime and then not actually commit the crime. So I think that's a fine line, but it's a really important line. And, and, and oftentimes, you know, when you're dealing with criminal justice matters, like you were just saying, Charlie, in any local court case, that fine line between intent and execution is it can ultimately be the difference between a guilty and a not guilty verdict. Yeah, well, let's let's face it. You know, I mean, uh, Comey, uh, the, the special uh, counsel, uh, the attorney general, serve at the pleasure of the president. It's within his purview to fire these people. So I have no doubt he fired Comey because he wouldn't make the Russian, the, the Flynn stuff go away. But isn't he entitled to do that under law? Sure, of course he is. Boom. And that's and that's where it's dicey to say that that's obstruction because, look, now you could say that I think the, I think well, the more well, plausible but, case for obstruction that people have tried to make is about him telling Comey that he needs to lay off on Michael Flynn, who, who he was who there was an active investigation underway into his ties to foreign governments. So that's, there have been other cases that people looked at for obstruction, but the firing of Comey itself, I agree. I, he serves at the, at the pleasure of the president, and, and Trump can fire him for whatever reason he wants to. But, but isn't the, the, the case for obstruction bigger when, okay, yeah, it's his purview to, to fire the, the uh, director of the FBI or change the attorney general, whatever. But when they're doing an investigation on him, doesn't that lend a little credence to the obstruction of justice? Yeah, look, I think that that's, yes, I think and that's what would, you know, that's what would obviously um, differentiate this from a typical case of a president firing a, a high-ranking cabinet member with whom he'd had some differences, right? Yes, the fact that he was under and his team was under investigation at the time of those firings is, is, what, raises the, is what raises the red flags for everyone. And, and also... Keep in mind that we've seen repeated instances of Trump, the commander in chief who who runs the American law enforcement apparatus, weighing in perpetually on active, ongoing criminal investigations, and even talking about witnesses themselves and people like Paul Manafort and like Michael Flynn who are under investigation, talking about them in the public arena, attempting to uh, sort of persuade. The prosecutions in one way or the other. So even that could be, under some definitions, under some readings, even that could be interpreted as obstruction of justice. So there's a whole body of this that, that you know, legal experts have had to consider. But ultimately, the Justice Department guidelines say that a sitting president cannot be indicted. And I think that that is sort of where the buck stops on all of this, that really, until Trump leaves office, we're never, we're never going to have a clear answer on whether or not what he did constitutes criminal behavior. Yeah, we, uh, we got to move on, uh, I think, and get to the business of the people. But l l let me, you know Matt Taibbi over at Rolling Stone, don't you? Yeah. He's definitely not a conservative guy. He's a cool dude. Let me, let me just read to you a little bit what he wrote. The big loser here may be being the media. He, quote, over and over, audiences were told the investigation had hit a turning point, after which Trump would either resign or be impeached because, as Brian Williams put it, summarizing a guest's take, quote, Donald Trump is done. This manipulative brand of news programming preyed upon the emotional devastation of liberal audiences, particularly the older people who watch cable. It told them the horror they felt over Trump's election would be alleviated in short order. All you had to do was keep tuning in because the good news could come at any minute now. The bombshell is coming. Never mind that this is causing our profits to soar. Don't wonder about our motives, even as outlets like blah, 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 MSNBC saw a 62% bump in viewership in the first full year of the Russiagate coverage. Just keep tuning in. The walls are closing in. That was bad enough. But now that the Mueller dream seems to have died, news organizations are acting like they didn't hype Mueller as savior. What's your thoughts on that? Well, I mean, I think he's right. Me uh, too. You know, to, to put it simply, look. That's good. That's <laughs> honest. Know, that's, that's why your chief political correspondent for the No Bullshit News Hour. Well, you know, think of it this way, guys. I mean, you remember during the campaign in 2016 when, when the president of CBS News was asked about, you know, you guys are on the one hand, you know, doing all of this 
pearl clutching and hand wringing about Trump and his sort of, you know, him acting as a menace to the conventions that we hold dear and the institutions in this country and, and, and yada, yada, yada. But on the other hand, you're keeping them on your damn television program around the clock and you're reaping all of these historic profits off of his candidacy and the wall to wall coverage. And he said, the CBS News president, he said, well, you know, Trump's Trump's not good for America, but he's damn good for CBS News. And I mean, I think that that gets to something that's really important here, not just in terms of the Mueller investigation, but in the entire sweep of this Trump era. I think it's very intellectually dishonest and disingenuous for for we in the media to sort of treat the, the, the phenomenon of Trump as something that we are all sort of horrified by and, and mystified by. Well, at the same time, we have been the ones in so many cases, not just propping him up, but kind of feeding, feeding the fire, feeding the ammunition for people who don't trust the media. A lot of Republican voters would have turned on Trump already if they did not perceive the media to be a, an active partisan combatant in trying to take him down. So they tuned us out to begin with. I mean, shit, don't get me started. This is a whole rant I can go on. But the oh. point is, what Matt just said is absolutely right. Yeah, I, you know, look, I, I never really posted stuff about him or, or, you know, really wrote because I'm at such a distance away because people take it as a, uh, a shot against them. You understand what I'm saying? Like if mm-hmm. you, if you voted for Trump, I don't think you're a racist. I, you know, may, maybe they're racist. There are races that voted for him, but you expressed your discontent with what's going on in American life. Right. But it turned into a complete shit show. So, we made money, and the media looks like our adversaries. You know, I mean, if, if I'm speaking as a, uh, a Trump person, of which I did not vote for Trump or Hillary, but I don't blame people for feeling that because I saw it. Fake as hell. Fake as hell. But that's, that's, yep. that's what he gets to do now. He was just look, in Michigan he, last night. That's what he's doing. Yep. And, and look, this guy, people, people need to understand this if they, if they don't already, and I don't mean to sound patronizing when I say this, but... President Trump, he operates best when he has a foil, right? During the campaign, think about it. You know, Lion Ted, Little Marco, Low Energy Jeb. This guy (laughs) thrives on a foil, and the media for him since the day he took office has been the perfect foil. And, and, And the shame of it, Charlie, is that in a lot of ways, this has been sort of a golden age for for political journalism. There has been a lot of really tremendous, groundbreaking work done by the Times and the Post and Politico and a lot of other organizations that have straight news reporters who have kept their nose to the grindstone and not gotten hysterical, not gotten over their skis, done a lot of really, really good, solid work. But that stuff tends to get swept away in the day-to-day insanity and the wall-to-wall hysterics, as I said, uh, and of what Matt described in his Rolling Stone piece. And, and that's really the bummer here is because the declining faith in the media as an institution is at this point sort of uh, inversely proportional to Trump's popularity among the Republican base. And I don't see that changing anytime soon. Well, I know you're on deadline, speaking of hardworking guys, so I'm going to let you go. Listen, did you get the conies and the punch keys and everything? <sighs> Did I get them, man? We, uh, yeah, we in the Alberta household, my wife, my boys, we had ourselves a little feast, courtesy nice. of friends at, at, at the Coney Island. So thank you very much for sending it. You're welcome, brother, and uh, we'll be in touch with you. Uh, thanks for all the hard work. You're one of the good ones. Thanks, Tim. Appreciate it, Charlie. Thanks, right, man. Talk to you, brother. See you. Good dude, smart dude. All right, let's. Uh, we got our Chicago correspondent waiting. You wanna wanna queue up? Let me let me get this read in here, Bob. Go ahead and queue up that that music. American Coney Island, founded by Gus Karos in 1917, is Detroit's oldest family-run restaurant and is the original home of the famous Detroit Coney Dog with chili, mustard, and Vidalia onions. Located in downtown Detroit at Lafayette and Michigan Avenue, always delicious, always open, 24 hours a day, seven days a week. They are good. The dog snap when you bite them, and the chili is a 100-year-old family recipe made especially for the American Coney dog, and the beer is cold. Don't forget, during Lent, every Friday, the cod sandwich. Delicious. Order a Coney kit straight to your or a friend's door. Go to AmericanConeyIsland.com. Good friend of this show. I recommend it. And I fixed all the coolers this week. Yes, working guy. 
I don't know if your mic's on, bro. I didn't hear you. Good job. Thank you. Do we got our guy from Chicago on? We got him? You there, sir? On the horn, my friend. Brad Edwards, investigative reporter at CBS Chicago, soon to be, if not already, the nighttime 11 o'clock anchor? Big guy. Is that right? Yeah, actually, I am now the main anchor. So, yeah, you are correct. Uh, Promoted, I believe, uh, potentially because of my performance on your last podcast. That's excellent. It was great. It was great. Brad Edwards, our <laughs> Midwestern Chicago correspondent. Brad, Jussie Smollett, what the fuck is going what on? What the fuck indeed? Well, I can tell you guys, I think, you know, it is surprising, I think, to most the country. A stunner, really, what happened indeed. here and what took place throughout this process and what happened this week. But to those in Chicago, I mean, to those that know the system, It is just another yarn in what is a completely broken political machine. So walk us through what happened real quick. Give us the ABC for those that, you know, don't know everything. Okay. ABC, Jesse Smollett, the star of Fox's Empire, apparently, (laughs) her police wanted a raise. So he initially sent himself a hate letter filled with white powder when that didn't get enough attention enough attention from apparently getting a hate letter with white powder that ends up being aspirin. He organized a hoax, homophobic hate attack against himself, uh, perpetrated by two mythical MAGA-wearing hat men in (laughs) Chicago's Streeterville. Uh, Ended up with a little ding on his cheek, and the world exploded for the next 48 hours after that, believing he was indeed hate attacked because of his race, because of his orientation uh, by potentially uh, Trump uh, supporting Chicago. In the middle and of a polar vortex, and he still made... In the ma- middle of a polar vortex. With a noose around his and neck, and he still managed to bring his Subway sandwich home after all that. Exactly. Okay. And then come to find out, oh, it wasn't true. He's charged by grand jury. Recommends 16 felonies. 16. For all the... 16 for all the work the police put into it, uh, all the lies that he told, all the havoc that he wrought. And the state's attorney's office, uh, a couple days ago, just decided to drop it all. Drop it all. Wants to expunge his record. Smollett did 16 hours of community service, one hour per every felony he purportedly committed. And he forfeited a $10,000 bond. Uh, that will go to the city. And people are stunned. And one of the biggest questions here, Charlie and Bob, I think you have, is we have a state's attorney who's, you know, a, a criminal justice reform advocate. So she is uh, adverse to the law and order police department. We also have a state's attorney who was compromised by the investigation. She was contacted by high-powered friends of Jesse Smollett, including Obama friends, and they tried to coerce her to get the Chicago Police Department to initially turn the investigation over to the FBI. When that was revealed, Kim Fox, the state's attorney, our prosecutor here, our Kim Worthy, she recused herself, quote-unquote, recused herself, said, you know what, I'm not going to try this case. But when you recuse yourself, you just have to take your office out of it, hand out to an outside prosecutor. She recused herself and then handed it to her second in charge, handed it to her second in charge who only answers to her. So it was really non-recusal, recusal. It'd be you, Charlie, like saying, I'm not dealing with it. I'm handing it to Bob. Bob, you take care of it. Well, you're still in charge, Charlie. So now there's these huge questions over her recusal. Now we've got the president involved. He's calling for an FBI investigation. Uh, We've got our mayor involved. He's enraged. He's thinking about suing Jesse Smollett. For $160,000, the purported amount it cost in overtime for Chicago police. But then Smollett may have the upper hand in it all, who may sue the city of Chicago for defamation, including the mayor, including the superintendent, our police chief, who've been bad mouthing him. And he may have the upper hand in all of it because, in the end, Jesse Smollett was completely exonerated and his record expunged. 
And yet, unbelievable. And yet, the the state's attorney's office says that it in no way exonerates Smollett. So they dropped the charges without exonerating the cat. Kind of sounds like the Mueller report. That's what they're saying. So here's what happened. I think they thought they would drop the charges. Jesse Smollett would say, I did my 16 hours of community service. I forfeited my $10,000 bond. I apologize for all the pain or even a non-apology. But he didn't I'm even sorry, apologize. He didn't, he did, he didn't apologize. Why, did he, Brad? Yeah, no, the, he the, the question is, down, why didn't they make him admit his guilt? In the face. He slapped everyone in the face, doubled down on his innocence, said he would never have done this if he was his mother's son, and, quote, he wouldn't drag his people through the fire like this. So he doubled down on his innocence. What the fuck? And Chicago is now left humiliated. And, Again. And I under, look, I understand criminal justice reform and, and you know, not putting, uh, putting non, not putting nonviolent offenders in jail and or prison. I get that. But what this man stirred up, especially in a town uh, like Chicago with Laquan McDonald and the problems with the police, right, and all yeah. the hard work they did, that, no, this, this is a... A whole nother level. He's fucking with the third rail. This is uh, absolutely a whole nother level. And he hit, I mean, it is actually, Charlie, the third rail. I mean, it's race the third in America, rail. yes. Race, it is race in America. It's race and also sexual identity in America. It's the left versus the right. He hit so many third rail topics in one hoax attack that, I mean, here we are. Weeks later, we've got the mayor of a major city in America and the president of America arguing back and forth. We are about to elect our first African-American female mayor in the history of Chicago. They're both in the runoff. One is uh, openly gay, a lesbian, former federal prosecutor. Who is that? Who is dominated? Who is that? Educate our audience. Give us the women's names. Uh, it is uh, Lori Lightfoot is a former federal prosecutor, uh, openly gay, really complete outsider who out of nowhere in the initial primary uh, finished first place, uh, beating out a woman, Tony Preckwinkle, who is in charge of the county, also in charge of the county Democratic Party. She is really the machine. She finished second. Finishing third was former... Clinton, Commerce Secretary, and Top Gun, and brother of one Chicago mayor and son of another, William Daly. So two women beat out a daily in this stunning upset. Wow. And the person who is likely going to win it is the outsider of them all. But to the backdrop of this, while all this history is happening in real time in Chicago— we are all talking about, and most people are stewing about, Jesse Smollett. Correct me if I'm wrong, because I've spent some time in Chicago, done a few things. Uh, i got to get there soon yeah. and get dinner with you again. But uh, Kim Fox, right, the state's attorney that recused herself to her subordinate. She's our Kim Worthy. Didn't she, didn't she wasn't she something like chief of staff for Preckwinkle? Oh, so Preckwinkle, Preckwinkle, who is the Cook County president. She's basically like the... Brooks Patterson of Cook County, which is where Chicago is. Uh, former alderman, which means uh, she was uh, formerly on the city council here. Uh, she is also the head of the Cook County Democratic Party. This woman is like the machine of Plug- Cook County. Plugged in. Her former chief of staff is now state's attorney, now prosecutor Kim Fox. So she is basically a create our state attorney our prosecutor is a creation of the woman who runs the machine Tony Breckwinkle who is now really taking most a lot of the heat for this is she I was gonna uh, I was wondering is this gonna have a, a bearing on the election oh absolutely it absolutely has a bearing on the election and we have uh, a couple of our most famous and eventually might end up being most notorious aldermen uh, one wore a wire for two years that came to be and the <laughs> one alderman basically run city council in the finance department and also as a side gig as a lawyer where he defends companies from getting their property taxes hiked. He's called a property tax appeal lawyers. How you can do those jobs, eh? two jobs, they're incongruous. It sounds like fucking Detroit. 
He's, he is at, under federal indictment, and she has an extremely cozy, Miss Preckwinkle, has an extremely cozy relationship with him, Alderman Ed Burke, whose wife is also on the Supreme Court, a Supreme Court justice. Mrs. Burke and Mr. Burke and Tony Preckwinkle, who ran the county, uh, were largely behind uh, an important push for criminal justice reform, which you are right, Charlie and Bob and everyone knows we absolutely need. There's no reason, you know, people who are swinging a dime bag. Dude, Cook County a, Jail is the better. biggest. Right, exactly. Is the biggest but, incarceration. But, hold on, listen. It's the biggest incarceration facility on the continent. Wow. Okay. Right. And it's the biggest but mental health think, hospital on the continent. Um, yeah, you're absolutely correct. Since we No room at the inn. The bond system, we've changed the bond system. We've now cut the jail population in half. But when it comes down to Jesse Smollett and completely exonerating and expunging his record, where's the deterrent? That's part of I what mean, this, yeah, that, this is this is not a Chicago system. story. It's a national story. That's why, you know, you're talking about it today like this. This can't stand. Yeah. Well, it, it rose to a national story because of the race implications, the sexual identity implications, and it, it, well, and it, it really rose to a national story because Jesse Smollett played it right on the, the political Trump and the fault line of America, which you know is 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 an earthquake that has happened between the left and the right, and. And, and remember, these, these streets, the are, our streets were burning just a couple of years ago, right? It's a, right. It's, it's a tinderbox out there, and he's fucking with matches. No, you got to... To you, get a raise. You got to do get some a raise. time. I guess, you know, Jussie's going to come after me, too. I guess. Brad, what are, what, are, what are the people on the streets of Chicago saying? Are they just outraged at this when they drop the charges? There is absolutely a sense of outrage, but I've never seen, like, I've never had my phone blow up so much in a matter of 15 minutes on one day than when the charges dropped. It was second only to the day I initially broke the story that the shift has happened, the shift that most people believed was going to happen, that all of a sudden Jesse became a suspect instead of a uh, alleged victim. But now, I mean... Right, 48 hours later, people are absolutely exhausted. Well, let me go like yeah. this. Let me go like this, because you rotate in the streets. I mean, streets. aren't you guys tired of it? Well, I mean, almost just mentally exhausted about out over it? Well, here's, Completely. Here's what I wonder. You rotate in the streets. You move about Chicago, all of Chicago. What does South Side, that means everyday black Chicago, make of this? <laughs> we talked to an African-American man who got charged with a drug crime, first crime of his life, first felony. He was given to us as an example by the state's attorney. They could only find a couple examples of people who got similar diversions. This guy was charged with one felony. He did 50 hours of community service, never lied to cops, admitted his guilt, 50 hours of community service during his two jobs, months later got his felony dropped. We're talking so much more effort into getting one felony drop compared to 16 hours of community for service for 16 felonies. He's angry. Why is, he's it, angry why, why is he angry? Smollett. He's I, angry he at should the be. system. He's angry at Jesse Smollett. He thinks Jesse Smollett has ma made an embarrassment out of Chicago, and he's angry. He, he's grateful to the prosecutor, but angry that the same system, because while well, a lot of people argue, well, Mr. Smollett may argue he is a victim of the system, too. He's not. He is a Hollywood star. So the West Side and the South Side, the young man we spoke to yesterday, he doesn't relate to Jesse Smollett. Well, I hear you because you know, you know what, Brad? It, it so. diminishes from the struggle, all the oh. barriers thrown up for people that grow up and are born into the South Side. That's what it does. It, yeah. it completely... It has. It, you're 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 totally right. It 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 diminishes so much. I mean, listen. And there are a lot of good cops out there, and there are a few really bad cops. But now, and the bad cops get most of the attention. But now we got some really good cops in Chicago. We've had a couple of them murdered in the past couple of years because they were doing their job. 
I mean, they were going after the fa- they were running into the fire, into the line of fire when they were murdered, and they worked so hard to solve this case to really save their city from further embarrassment. And what message does this send to them? Right on. They throw their hands up. What do you want us to do? Arrest people? Not arrest people? You know, people are angry at us for this. Now we, we, we make you, a, you know, give you this case that's rock solid. You're just going to drop it? 16 felonies, and then you're going to let him slap us in the face and proclaim his innocence? Well, the, the, it, city's, the city's a, a, a muck. And not only drop it, but drop it with no explanation. Kim Fox didn't explain why. Just said, oh, he's innocent. You know, innocent. I believe, I believe Come on. that she will. She will. Someone will have to call for an investigation. She cannot. She cannot. It's too late. She, re- she, she recused herself. herself. She recused herself. Right. She put herself in but a, in a co- stupid. But she didn't recuse herself. Right. No, if she, she steps yeah, if she, she steps did. out, right? She steps back out, takes control of it again. You just right. you just suborned all the all the alleged exactly. work you I, did. I, I recuse myself a, while I put my thumb on the scale. Yes. You can't you can't recuse yourself when you put it would be like Donald Trump saying, I'm not gonna handle this issue, I'm putting Mike Pence in charge. That's not a recusal. <laughs> Who's Mike Pence answer to? That's actually how it is because she put her first deputy in charge he only answers to one person Kim Fox and they didn't notify the chief of police or the mayor that they were doing it on a national case That's fucking right, amateur hour man did did uh did you guys in in the media and the people in Chicago did they have any sense that this was coming or was it completely out of the blue it was totally out of the blue yeah we knew that morning that there was this hearing going on and everyone expected it would be some type of plea and you know because jesse smollett does he need to be in jail eh, most would argue probably not you know do some great community service do some you know public service pay back a boatload of money you know raise some money for actual crime victims something like that we thought they'd probably come up with some really progressive idea then wham drop everything and you know People were like, we got the information, and reporters, it was like we were reticent to even tweet it or Facebook it because we're like, no. Dropped? Really? <sighs> like, gone? I couldn't like believe it either. 16 felonies? And then they came up with this thing that he had done two days that uh, Jesse Jackson's uh, Rainbow Push. I've done more days, community service than two, that. Two eight hour days. I've done more time I than mean, him. And it, it wasn't like two, it wasn't, it wasn't 18 hours. So have I, Michigan State University, you know. I had a couple of uh, fun nights. Was that Cedar um, Village? It huh? happens. Oh, Cedar Village, man, back in the day. Did it involve you know, a burning in couch? Championship <laughs> day, when they ban alcohol from Munn Field. Oh, man. Good Brad it Edwards. <laughs> it, was, it was way back, it was back in the day that, uh, you really didn't have a reason to do anything, you know. There was no reason for a riot. I mean, they said you don't drink beer on this field, right? And then everyone's like, "We're going to riot." Okay, so uh, now we're in a political climate where there are reasons, and there is true injustice, and there is this this what this young man uh, perpetrated. It will be a case study, I think, for years to come, and. I don't even think, I think people here in Chicago want it to be over with. Now what we're interested to see is really, what does he do next? Well, let me go like this. These are the the last three because we're moving along and you're on deadline. Number one, what about the federal crime, the male crime and the terrorism? Where are they going with that? There's a place to hit. You're talking about the initial attempt to get attention in that setting of a MAGA letter with white powder to himself with like a little stick figure apparently hanging from a tree. Yes. Uh, it was believed that when that didn't get enough attention, he upped it. And anyone knows you don't perpetrate a crime using the mail. Right. Uh, because that's stuff. And Trump so is sticking I his beak in it. So do you expect, do you expect those charges? I don't know. 
Okay, we'll leave it at that. Report yeah. back to we us. Have, we have no, I'm surprised, but we have no inclination that there will be. Maybe, However, maybe you raised the question, this though. Could change things. This could change things. With the state charges being dropped, we'll see. Okay, number two. We pride ourselves on uh, having the news before it's news. So what's next week's news today? Chicago. I, well, I mean, it is going to be a huge headline, and we're like, it's going to be a national headline. Next week, Chicago will have its first-ever African-American female mayor, and it's likely going to be a complete outsider, a woman named Lori Lightfoot. Lori and Lightfoot. Write it down. That, is, Edwards. So, that is so outside Lightfoot. of the system. And... That could hurt. One of the top priorities that she's going to have to deal with is the fallout from this case and how now there is a relationship in one of the largest cities in America between the state's attorney and the Chicago Police Department that is untenable. They so, are well, so it's, it's adversarial. So, now, listen. Listen to the math here. Adversarial. You have an outsider as the mayor. You have an insider as the uh, state attorney. And you have a dysfunctional police force that's angry. So... Wow, it's going to be rocking yeah. in Chicago. But you realize the, the insider, the also the insider that the state's attorney is all of a sudden becoming more of an outsider because, you know, if if, if we're just smoking cigars, talking politics, the the, the, the woman who made her, uh, you know, has now been defeated. Is state's an attorney a, so, an elected position or an appointed position? Yes, elected. And well, there she's in. So it'll be interesting. Brad, last question. Did you get the Coney dogs? No, oh, I totally got them. What'd you think? Uh, and had them deliciously and, I mean, had them in a big way with friends on St. Patty's Day. And, uh, I mean, it went over huge. And I said, you know, I usually don't have a ransom. But when you asked me to come <laughs> on the show, my ransom was what? Coney dogs. Chili. Two chili. You want the chilies. Is that what you're chili. saying? You just want the chili only. So having had I the mean, American... I love the dogs. Yeah, but I mean, I can get my own dogs here, but I want to double down on that chili because I can't get chili like that anywhere around here. Ah, so you know what I'm going to do, Brad? And and listeners, mm-hmm. listen, you can't get chili. We're not going to start that. But this is Brad. This is He's, he's part, of the, yeah, right, part of the program. Don't start, don't um, start calling me up for chili. I'm going to send you a brick. Like five servings, bro, because I love you, man. I really do, and I'm proud of you. Really? And everything, yeah. Yep. Thank you. Sure am. And well, every- and, we, and we want you to enjoy the taste of the American Coney Island so you'll come back to Detroit. Nah, fuck oh, you. Oh, I mean, we don't, we don't need you in Detroit. Coney Island is hot. <laughs> you prissy you sellout with the really Hemingway like- beard and the puffy hair, anchor man. <laughs> Yeah, right. I tell you, you can't get chilly like that around here, though, you know? And it, but it, it's fascinating. Um, it's going to be interesting to see where this goes, but right now people are, people are just finished with it too. Well, we'll be with you, man. Hey, listen, uh, I love you, Brad. Thanks for being on and we'll, we'll be back in touch. Love you guys. Talk soon. Glad to hear, glad to hear from you, Brad. Peace. God, man. Chicago sounds a lot like Detroit. A lot. Oh, look at that. Thanks, Bob. Jump in there. Happy birthday to you. Uh, yeah. yeah. Thank you. My knee hurts. Amy's here with a cake for Charlie. How sweet. Oh, it says NBN. Happy birthday, Charlie. Thanks, <laughs> Happy birthday, Charlie. Uh, what kind of cake is it, babe? It's a raspberry tort. Raspberry tort. Raspberry tort. tort. <laughs> hmm. It'd be good with a whiskey, wouldn't it? Oh, wait, I forgot. Oh, uh, oh, thanks, Bobby. Lord. Brought me some whiskey. I can't really, I want to open it, but I can't. I'm uh, going to be on the Crime Town um, wrap up party tonight, live simulcast. You know, they just did Detroit great and sold their network, Gimlet, for a quarter billion dollars. That's why I brought you. Wow. 
Oh, what? Oh, what is that, baby? Oh, Amy. A nice bit of Belgian ale. Thank you, babe. I love you. That is nice. Happy birthday, Charlie. Sweet. And I could barely read that label. You know what that means, Bob? Oh, <laughs> I think I know what that means. Bye, ahead, Bye Amy. Go ahead and cue up, uh, cue up the docs music, will you? Well, the show's getting so produced. Well, we're trying to, you know, because uh, we do believe in not wasting people's time. It's a network standard. A little louder, Bob. Yeah. Mike Clark will sing along with this song. These eyes. Dr. Yaldo. These eyes. It's for you, baby. Doctor. And all the ladies in the office. Can you bring that down a little bit, Bob? So can... Thank you. People like you, our listeners, are out there in podcast land, have so many misconceptions about eye surgery. What you do know is that you're tired of glasses, contacts, reading glasses, and ever-changing prescriptions. And you're frustrated because when you take out your contacts, put down your glasses, or forget your reading glasses, you still can't see. Each week... Thanks to Dr. Yaldo, Michigan's most experienced eye surgeon, many of you get to throw away all that ancient technology and walk out of his office with 2020 vision or better and begin your new lifestyle free from glasses and contacts. From custom cats LASIK, the most advanced in the world, to the Rolls Royce procedure, multifocal lens implants for people 50 plus, Dr. Yaldo has performed some 50,000 combined procedures. Here's the bottom line. The evaluation is free, and you've got nothing to lose by making the call. 1-800-398-EYES. And if you have a fresh health savings account or a tax return coming, use it to change your life. 1-800-398-EYES. Or go to YaldoEyeCenter.com. They're good over there. I need to go see Dr. Yaldo. My I'm eyes saying are bad. you're going to. I know. i got to make an appointment. i got an eye exam. They, it it no, went well. There's no heavy push there to, to get surgery. I mean, they, they sell glasses. I'm afraid of surgery. What's that? Frames, too. If you, don't, if you decide against it, frames, you can do frames. Yep, lenses, everything. You know, they gave you the eye chart and moved them to the left, moved them to the right. I'm making an appointment. Okay, there you go. That would be 800, Bob, 398 EYES. All right, I'm calling. And mention the no bullshit news hour, Charlie Duff, and. I'm told we get paid something, and you know it's hard <laughs> to be in, hard to be independent out there. <laughs> so I want all forty thousand of you to call one eight hundred three nine eight eyes. Yeah, the uh, Hugh Perkins episode is forty thousand and counting. That's a strong, strong show. To people, it doesn't sound like much, does it? I think it does. I th- because podcasting, you have to make an effort. You can turn on the radio and hear someone, but could that person do a podcast and draw 40,000 people? Because you got to search out the podcast. Yeah, you got to find it. you got to like that one person who doesn't have those tested songs to play, <laughs> to draw people in. See, I, I think podcast land's a wasteland. I, I really do. I think, I think it's like the dot- As he says it on the podcast. I, I, think, it's like right. the, I think it's like the dot-com <laughs> bubble. You know what I mean? I just, when are we going to burst? There's 660,000 of these things. Well, you know how many of them have 40,000 downloads? Less than 1%? Uh, far less than 1%. Wow. I'm, here to, I'm here to tell you. See, and that's the thing. Like, when we were imagining it, because Drew, you're Drew, man, and uh, you're the biggest thing going. He's the man. Well, not, uh, there's Crime Town. Yeah, they're bigger. There's Mark Maron. There's Joe Rogan. There are other worlds to conquer. But, you know, I remember Fox 2 asking me, you know, what would be your goal? Then I said, God, if we get a quarter of a million people listening to a podcast, I'd be so excited. And we're, we're at 150 now. Wow. And you I have a dream. Yeah. Thank well, you, you know why? Because your podcast is fucking awesome. And, thank you, Bob. And, you, and your audience, the ones that come and go, the overall audience is above 200,000, is it not? The total number, yes. So, so we listen to a, one podcast every 60 days. That's amazing. I know. It's, I, I'm blown away. So, you know, pumped. so that's why we decided we, we should bring you news because you don't want to listen to the Duffy Amaron. I mean, I know you're sending me the <laughs> pointed little bullshit on Twitter. I'm, I'm just trying to inform you what I think you need to know. What you're, you what, news. what you're doing is hard, very hard to do because, first of all, you don't have a staff like some of these people do in these news operations. Although their staffs are getting smaller, you're, you're 
breaking news all by yourself, and I, I don't really know quite how you're doing it. They're still following you, Charlie. We're sweat, I, you know, like I like Friday nights because that's when I'll get my drink on and this is done. And you had Huel, and it's great. And then I do. I start sweating this thing come Sunday. Like fuck, shit. What are we gonna do? You can and, do right. Got to get Brad. We got to get Tim, and got to get Fakano, and where's Karen? And you know, is Drew gonna sit in? And what do we talk? What's topical? And then I gotta, I gotta come up with some of my own news, right? in order to set the template of where we're going to go. News you're not getting that you do need. Well, see, that's that's what most podcasters don't do. That They go, oh, I'm somebody. I have a podcast. They don't Listen even know what me. <laughs> you love me because I'm in a couple movies. I love I loved tarts with the almonds in them. <laughs> I, I had a hit record 30 years ago. Yeah. Uh, and, Listen and, to me. Yeah, and it, it, what you find out is that you know, I don't really like that person, and they don't really bring enough to bring me back every week. You have some people come back every week, and when you came on, I knew it was new, although you knew a lot about it, you studied it, but honestly, to try to do a show that has, well, you, you put a lot into the show, and you have vision, and those things are rare. It's good to be with you, man. I, for me, it's like, uh, for everybody listening, to work alongside you like Joe works alongside me it's it's an honor I mean not for Joe but for me with you Drew because I get to learn I this is like a PhD it's learning a whole new medium and how you do it and how things are produced it, I just love to learn in life you well know? Charlie you're officially the king of all media in Detroit <laughs> newspapers TV and now podcasting books which, book uh, books I forgot books. yeah that okay. read the books so I left that out and I wrote, a, I wrote a Hollywood script. It's going around again. Okay, you're one medium away from Howard Stern. <laughs> can, can I ask to play in your movie? Oh, yeah. All right. I want to Oh, yeah. You can play yourself? Sure, maybe. <laughs> yes, it'll be set in Detroit. It'll be a tough play. I think your voice is great for, uh, for the podcast, by the way. It's to have a very unique sounding voice. I think it adds a lot. Not, not just your voice, though. <laughs> what you have to say, Bob. You want, you want to hear a voice? Yeah, hey, Adolf, you. you there? Yeah, I'm here. Adolf Mongo, how you doing, brother? I'm all right. Uh, listen, Adolf Mongo is sort of like the Rasputin of Detroit politics. Uh, look, tell me some don't, people. Don't, don't try to poison and shoot me and throw me in the river like this. <laughs> <laughs> tell me whose campaigns you've worked on. Let me start. Ed McNamara, the Wayne County executive. Yeah. Um, Mike Duggan, as when he was the Wayne County running for Wayne County prosecutor. Yeah. Kim Worthy, the current Wayne County prosecutor? Yeah. Jeffrey Figer in his run for governor? Yeah. Uh, Coleman Young? Yeah. Qua the Kwame senior and junior. And junior. Qu uh, Kwame Kilpatrick? Yep. So you've seen it in any Republicans you ever worked with? Oh, uh, they ran for Court of Appeals. Uh, I, I ran five <laughs> Court of Appeals campaigns. And so cool. So, you know the you know the landscape in Detroit. As far as I know, nobody bit. better. Yeah, a little bit. All right. Did you see the story I wrote this week for Deadline Detroit? Yeah. Detroit's <laughs> little <laughs> Detroit's little Trump. You see this photo? I love the photo. <laughs> Everybody should check out the photo. Yeah, it's uh, <laughs> it's uh, Mayor Mike Duggan's face over Donald Trump's hair. It fits. It fits him. I, it does. It does. Doesn't I it? Swear he need to. He need to get him one of those uh, orange toupees. <laughs> <laughs> well, the, the, a lot of people when you when you post them, they don't read it, and it's just you know, pro Trump, anti Trump. You're fishing, blah blah blah. What what I wrote about the story was this: Trump is free and clear now, as as far as I can see. There's no forget it. It's a campaign rally for him now. No collusion. But what we have in Detroit is a federal, and I, I'm sorry, ladies and gentlemen, I have to do my work. This isn't any conspiracy or I'm trying to settle a score. This is you, the work that you need and that you should be aware of. There's a huge federal investigation into collusion and bid rigging and, and fucking with federal money in this demolition program. I do have documents. The mayor's name is going around within this. I don't know and I never said he's going to be indicted. I would never do that. That would make me as bad as the national media thinking Trump's going to it's going to fall on him any minute. Now, I never did that. I'm just making you aware of what's going on. But let's just say 
he did get hit with an indictment. What would that mean, Adolf, if, if the, the big Democratic player in the state of Michigan got hit with a federal charge in the middle of the election cycle when Michigan, Michigan, is the cornerstone of taking the White House? What would that mean? Uh, chaos. Uh, that means Donald Trump uh, won't lose Michigan. You don't think so? No, I don't. You, you know what? The Democrats sat on their asses uh, when Hillary ran. Um, she didn't even come bother to come to Michigan, and she didn't even really. Detroit was not even in her head, and and Duggan, he didn't do shit. Yeah. You know, he's just so uh, the bottom line is uh, right now, it, 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 Whitmer uh, it, it can't it can bring a, a, a thousand people, a hundred people to a rally as she came into the heart of the city. But don't you think the distaste for let's for Trump in Detroit would be enough to bring out droves of voters? Man, people are disillusioned, man. That's why. That's why. Uh, Duggan is the mayor. People, uh, you know, people didn't go out and vote. True that's, that. That's, that's the deal. They did, they did not go vote. You, you're talking about 10, 15 percent of the vote go out. He got elected. The majority of the people say, "Why should I vote?" Uh, it doesn't matter. If they're if the people look, this is the pathway. To, for the Democrats to lose Michigan, and they're going to come. They're going to come with money. They're not going to make that mistake twice. The way well, they they came, they came with money before, but they never spent any money inside the city. But they go and get they go and get four or five jack leg creatures and parade them around, and and and, that, and that's what they do. Well, they're going they to now. Lie, they don't they don't spend money with black planners, black public relations folks, etc. But if if the city's de- this time. If the city's demoralized, let's say, like the dirt that was thrown in those demolition holes is poison, and they just feel like they were shit on, is that, is that enough to to keep them away? Would they just say, fuck not, it? Man, listen, we got uh, thousands of people that don't have running water. You would think people would be so outraged that they, they would not only march on uh, city hall, but they will be dragging uh, people like Doug and his top lieutenants out of there to lynch them. <laughs> but they don't. You would think. We got, we, got the, we got all these murders every single day. Somebody's getting shot down in their front yard or somebody breaking somebody's house, killing the father in front of his kids. And where is the outrage? Where's the help is what I want to know. That's yeah. what I want to know. But I'm going to tell you what, man. Uh... Yeah, City Hall was pissed. Oh, by the way, I know you're listening from this letter you sent, City Hall, so <laughs> welcome in. And again, Mr. Mayor, uh, I called. You're invited anytime. Anytime. To come on the show. Please do. And we will have a robust discussion. You, now, you're, the last, you're the last uh, journalist in, in, in Detroit, Charlie. Thank you, Adolf. Rest, rest of these, rest of these folks, you know what? They don't even want to write about them. If you could call in somebody Teflon when it comes to the media here, he, he is what he is. And if it wasn't for you and what you've been doing, you know, they wouldn't report any of this stuff. Oh, I think the mayor would like me to tell the audience that the day the feds were in the building and he was leaving out the front, says here that, you know, he had a lunch appointment that he was late for. And as he walked through the lobby, as is his custom, the mayor stopped and spoke to as many people as he could without making himself late for his appointment. He stopped and took pictures with a couple of residents, but had to keep moving to make the lunch and did not have time to stop and talk to everyone who approached him. This is an everyday occurrence, which is normally met with understanding. The mayor was not aware, aware until days later that one of the people he did not have time to stay and talk with was the owner of American Coney Island, Leduff's other employer, who apparently was doing some product promotion. They know a lot about me, but here's the thing. Mr. Mayor, next time you're going to walk to a lunch appointment when it's very cold, you should wear a coat. Right. You can see the picture online. But he, he, but he doesn't wear a coat. Not even in the he cold, never, huh? He never wears a coat. I don't think he owns a coat. <laughs> <laughs> the 
the mayor, you, you know what? And, and, and what's crazy? Uh, during the uh, mayor, uh, the, the his campaign for re-election against Coleman Young Jr., uh, a lot of reporters they wrote all kind of unflattering things about Coleman's appearance, but then never said anything about how Duggan looked like he just slept in his suit. <laughs> when he came into his office, he looked a mess. He does. He, he definitely is, looks uh, rumpled. Let me yeah, gi- let me give you another little something from from the letter. Uh, yeah, but he's but he is. But you know what? I have to give him credit. He know how to play the game. Here, he yeah. is like tough. You know they keep shit going. Oh, uh, they know how to divert. They know how to divert all the. Trump never tried all, to sue all me. The accusations off of them. Trump never tried to sue me. Here, let me read this last paragraph here. LaDuff has character in the story I wrote at DeadlineDetroit.com. LaDuff has characterized internal federal memos he claims to have, but he did not quote directly from them and did not publish them. Given his history of false allegations against the mayor's administration on this itch issue, which included multiple apologies and retractions from Fox 2 News on his previous stories on this issue, we ask that you require LaDuff either to publish these alleg- alleged documents so the public can read them. If what he's saying is true, he should let everyone read them. Otherwise, he should not be allowed to make unsubstantiated allegations in this manner. Not going to publish them, Mr. Mayor. What you should do, sir, is release the legal bills. That's it. The stuff we're paying for. How much did it cost? And don't worry about what I'm doing. Right? You're paying $1,000 an hour lawyers. Have them get you the documents. How much of the poorest people in urban America's money have you spent? Simple. What do you think, Adolf? Simple, right? A whole lot, man. He's in D.C. meeting with lawyers every other month. Do you know that or are you just saying that? No, he's in D.C. He's meeting with his legal staff. He got lawyers there. Again. When he said he was in New York... For a fundraiser, he was meeting with uh, uh, legal folks. Let me just tell you something. This is facts, people. The Republican National Committee is aware of the story. That means Donald Trump is aware of what's going on here. No matter what happens, somebody is going to have to pay some money back. Minimum. That's all I'm going to say. I'm not saying the hammer's falling. I never said it, and I won't, because I don't know. But the reporting is... Lots of trouble, lots of smoke in Detroit. We got the city council. Oh, I'm also hearing the, the Wayne County power structures trying to force uh, Wayne County Treasurer Eric Sabree out. They want him to resign by Wednesday before that ethics hearing. So you hear anything on that, Adolf? Uh, yeah, that's, that's, that's the word that's around. What's he, what's he thinking? Uh, is he going to resign? No, I don't think he's going to resign. No, I think he sticks it out. I think you do, yeah. He's going to ride it out. Yep, and then, you know, feds are up his ass, as we reported here back uh, back in December. We might send Joe back with a chicken suit. Hmm. <laughs> you know, talk to him. Hey, Adolph, are you going gonna to be on the, the Crime Town uh, rap party tonight? Yeah, I guess. Uh, only because of you, Charlie. And I'm only doing <laughs> it because of you, baby. So, <laughs> I mean, that, that, was, uh, that was a great program, man. It, it, it was you and your brothers really made it, you know, really, really painted the picture of this town. So made, made it real. So I'd be honored to sit there with you. I can't wait to see what hear what you say. Well, I'll I'll, I'll see you tonight, uh, the Charlie. Okay, real quick question, Adolf. Go ahead. How was a black man named Adolf? Adolf. Adolf. Yeah, it's I mean, na- it's a good name. I mean, Adolf. I mean, did did you ever ask Al Tubman why his name was Adolf? Uh, I never met Al Thomas. I would have, yeah. I'm just telling you, he was Jewish. Uh, Harpo Mark, his, his given name was Adolf. No, I had an uncle who was born in the 1920s. And uh, my grandmother and the lady next door was from Germany was best friends. She named him. That was before Hitler came into power. And I grew up with two other black Adolfs in my neighborhood. What, what year were you born? Fifty-four. You were, you were, you were kind <laughs> Wait of. Wait like, a second. Yeah, you were kind of like named after World War II. It don't matter. I was named after the uncle. He had, he had the name. 
Is it with an F or a PH? PH. And what is your PH? P-H-A-D-O-L-P-H. It's your, your, your body pH is whatever the pH of vodka is, bro. I'll see you tonight, all right? <laughs> okay, Charlie. <laughs> I'll a, talk to you. In a minute, brother. Thanks for being on. Right. Okay. Uh, real quick. I was expecting that birthday to be like 1936 or something. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> he ages well. Oh, my Lord. Okay, so you know how... Good interview, though. Uh, uh, Drew, you, you always ask us, you know, download the show and, yeah. and rate it. Um, I met uh, Average Eddie here at the Coney. Average Eddie loves the podcast, and he's, he's got a little trick. Oh, is that so? Apparently, you can rate it as many times as you want. I'm not aware of that. Did you get him, Bob? Not yet. All right, go ahead and talk to him. I like having a populist listener on, though. Yeah, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to call Average, Average Eddie here. Yeah, rating the show is uh, is important. It's very helpful. I, I don't know why I feel like a... I don't know. I don't like asking people to do stuff. It's like I'm so happy they're listening to the show. But people generally very happily rate us. And they write some nice comments in as well. And, and that's great. Hello. Hey, Average Eddie. Hey, what's happening? My man, what's, where you at right now? Uh, I am driving, but I am... Pulling over, so I'm not distracted. That's very sophisticated of you. What do you do for a living, Ed? Sorry? What do you do for a living? So I'm a service technician for um, a vending company. Shout out to Modern Vending. Um, hey, hey, hey. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, I'm just, uh, you know, average blue, you know, wearing a blue collar shirt right now. We're all, we're all about you, career. Eddie. You're, you're, you're everything I love, man. Now, listen, um, tell, tell us the little, uh, you know, rating trick you were telling me about. So, yeah, I discovered, um, you know, because you guys are always talking about, you know, hey, the ratings, and that's how the rating system goes with you guys, right? you got to rate the podcast. It's not like TV, right? So um, every time you say that, I started going back and re-rating the podcast. And what I found out is you can just keep rating it. You can go and rate it as many times as you want. Um, it'll even save your old review. So, if, you know, I wrote out a review. It saves it. You know, I'll change a couple words in it, submit it again. Sometimes <laughs> I don't even submit a review. I just get five stars. So, you know, every time I think about it, every time I listen to you guys' show, I just go and re-rate the show. <laughs> My man. <laughs> From the same place? So I'm hoping they're all going through and stuff. I, they say they're going through when I rate it, you know. So um, you have to yeah, yell through because he's on the phone. To do that. <laughs> I just wondered if he did it from the same phone or from the same URL. Yeah, how do you do it? it? You do it from the same phone, the same the iPad. Same, yeah, the same phone. Um, yeah, the same everything. Well, talk it's us through not, it, Eddie, real quick. How how do you subscribe to this show? Do you know how to uh, do it? Through the Apple Podcasts. So download the Apple app, right? Podcast app? Yep, the podcast app. Yep, most of it should come right on your phone. Okay. Um, if not, just download it. Um, and, yeah, you just uh, put in your show name in the search bar. Um, it comes up. A um, little subscribe button you hit there. And if you scroll down, it'll say uh, write a review. And you click on that. It'll ask you, you know, you want to put one star, five stars. No, five stars only. Five stars only, yep. <laughs> you have a five-star average, by the way. <laughs> I believe it. Yeah, it's because I've been submitting it about 100 times a week. <laughs> My <Good> man. man. <laughs> okay, now, Eddie, listen. Uh, is the show, do you find it valuable to you as a news source? <laughs> I do, and I got a story that goes along with that. I'll give you a quick synopsis of it. That, Thank you for that. You know, Would have never happened if I didn't listen to your show. So, like I said, I'm just uh, an average guy, everyday Eddie, you know. And um, But I hear stories about politicians and, you know, you guys were talking about Gretchen Whitmore and how she wants to put a 47-cent gas tax. Um, you guys played the clip how she denied it in her debates against Gary Peters. That was classic. Um, Bill so Shooty, but... Shooty. Yeah, yeah. Um, so I was wondering how does a guy like me get my opinion across 
to these politicians? I mean, they work for us, right? I mean, right. Good question. You know, and so I get all this information from you, and I stew about it, but I got no way to vent it, you know? So one day I'm just driving, it popped in my head. I said, well, maybe I can write a letter to him. And I go, man, that, you know, it takes a while. I'm like, you know what? Screw this. Why don't I just freaking call the governor's office? You know what? Why not? So I'm like, damn, if I do, I just Google the number, called the governor's office, answered after two rings. Hey, how can I help you? I'm like, yeah, uh, I just wonder how I go about writing a formal complaint or, or an opinion letter at least. Um, about some issues, and they said, hold on, I'll transfer you to the such-and-such such department, which I guess is, you know, the, the com complaint the department. The complaint department. <laughs> so, um, so the guy gets on the phone, and I tell him, you know, that I wasn't thrilled about this gas tax, and, you know, it's going to hit the poorest people the most. You know, a company like mine, we're a vending company. You know, if gas prices go up, so does the cost of chips, so does the cost of your milk, so does the cost of a Pepsi. You That's know, it's fucking affects smart. Our prices. You're a smart you know, man, Eddie. Everything is affected, right? Right. Everything. And, you know, people, it's not just going to affect you personally at the gas pump. It's going to affect the guy delivering your milk. All right, st stop preaching, milk. Eddie. What happened? How do you lodge the complaint? <laughs> so, um... So, yeah, they filed the complaint. He said, no problem. He took down my name. He wrote it all up as I was telling it. He said, I'll submit this to the governor, took down my city, um, and filed a complaint. So, um, you know, but it would have never happened if I wouldn't have been listening to your show to get the information. So okay. I encourage everybody to do the same thing out there that's wondering how they can, you know, get their get their opinion across. What's the number then? How do they do it? They What do they do? You know, I just I just went to Google and put Michigan Michigan Governor's Office, and the number came right up. It was the first thing. I mean, you can't okay you can't, can't miss it. Then I'm going to say to the listener: If you're mad as hell and you're not going to take it anymore, and you don't want to pay the highest gasoline tax in America, go to Google, call the governor's office, tell them Eddie sent you from the No Bullshit News Hour, and you're not paying it, right, Eddie? You got it. Every they, day, Eddie says, call him. Eddie said, all right, Eddie, I love you, man, and uh, we're going to have you back on the show, all right? Hey, any time, man, and uh, you guys keep doing what you're doing. Uh, Karen, miss and love you. Love you guys' show. Keep up the good work. Yeah, listen, Good Karen's going to be back next week, and you know Bob Ficano, right? Oh, yeah. Yeah, Bobby said he's going to come on. Uh, I Charlie. Yeah. <laughs> It's late 30, Charlie. Bob. Charlie. Don't be, don't be a media bully, Charlie. Make an appointment, yeah, Charlie. Track track and <laughs> anybody who wants to call the governor's office, it's 517-373-3400. Do it again. 517-373-3400. There's power to the people. Make yourself Amen. known. Make yourself heard. Like Eddie says, they work for you. All right, Ed, I'll let you go, baby. Exactly. Hey, one more thing. Yeah. Uh, so I did my homework before I called them. So it is going to be an implemental tax to where it's not going to be 47 cents right off the get. It's going to be 10 cents this year, 20 cents next year, 30 cents to where it adds up. So that that's useful to know, but it still doesn't change the fact that we're going to, at the end of it, be the highest in the, in the country. Yeah, that's five. over 18 months, Eddie. Very astute of you. Thanks for that. That's deep, deep knowledge. That's the no bullshit news hour. <laughs> Eddie with the incremental sliding scale gas tax. <laughs> we'll still it. pay more than motherfuckers in New York City pay. Like Look California. at the roads. Yeah. Uh, you know what floats New York City? Wall Street, big business. They pay taxes. Business should fucking shoulder some of it. Right, Ed? Absolutely. All Absolutely. right, man. More, man. Power to the people. Thanks, Ed. You got it. Love you guys. Keep up the good work. All right, man. Woo. It's Average Eddie. Average Eddie. Vending machine mechanic, salt of the earth. I haven't found Eddie's reviews yet, but you got some great reviews. You want me to read a couple? Okay. Can't say I found a more rounded, no-nonsense author, reporter, Red Shovel Studio roof inspector, example of the human race, than Mr. Charlie LaDuff. <laughs> He's the journalist that isn't afraid to ask the tough questions and get folks that aren't acting right riled up. Listen to the podcast, read his books, look back at the body of work. He's amassed and judge for yourself. I wrote that. Nice. Truth. Thank you. Charlie's the man, getting down and dirty with hard-hitting questions and demands answers. Guy literally smashed a mug on episode two. The Detroit police guy gave him because he can't be bought. Can't get enough of Charlie. Like all his books and his style of reporting. Like how he tells everything about Detroit, not just the new area. Also will tell the truth on national news topics. I really relate with a sense of humor. 
Pure Charlie cutting through the crap, revealing the ugly truth. He's a real asset to journalism. Can't wait for more shows. The podcast will find its way to your brain, but also to your heart. You can't help but feel a kinship with Leduff. You know he cares. You know he wants us to learn, and you know he wants you to laugh. The trifecta. Uh, and then he gives a nice plug for uh, Shit Show. And then he says, propelled by the Drew and Mike podcast. Yes. Nice. Sir. There you go. Because we're a network now, Red Shovel yes. Studios. Great and honest reporting. Keep up the good work. This will be one of the best news podcasts. Great host, great news subjects. Fantastic. Great listen. Charlie, always informative, entertaining. Charlie's a smart reporter who should be listened to. He deserves, he loves the D and deserves a forum. I was so excited to hear about this on the Drew Mike podcast. I love Charlie. Is that, I mean, it just goes there, really. I could, I could really use a few good. more thousands of those. I've been doing my part. I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get some hand lotion, a couple of Kleenexes, and lay in bed and read those. <laughs> <laughs> wow. <laughs> and it's your birthday, too. It is my birthday. Happy birthday. Thank you. Uh, listen, usually we go out with a, a song, but songs come in many, many forms. And it is my birthday, and the greatest gift I ever got from God Almighty was my daughter. And she's getting into the teens now, but Matt Phillips, you know, we, we're also known on this show. Our for, guy. For, the, for the, the good audio pieces that we do, the good sounds, and we haven't done those in a while. So, so we th- put Matt back to work. So I was celebrating last night with my wife, and Matt sent this, and it made me cry in a good way. Uh, remember, love each other. It's all about each other. It's about our children, and um, I hope you enjoy this because it's, it's it's beautiful. And the news here is Natalie is reading above age level. Congratulations, girl. And we'll talk to you next week. What book did you want to read today? The Pigeon Needs a Bath. Sounds like a sounds like a good book. Describe the pigeon for me. He says I do not. He doesn't, but he looks what he like what does he look like? Filthy. He looks filthy. Hi. I don't know if you've noticed. But the pigeon is filthy, so I could use your help because the pigeon needs a bath. That is a matter of opinion. What a kidder. I don't really need a bath. I took one last month. I think it was last month. Dirty. They're just words, right? I feel clean. Maybe you need a bath. Yeah, when was the last time you had a bath? Ooh, that was pretty recently. I have a bath. I just took a bath right now. You just took a bath, so you're clean. You're not filthy. Yeah, just, I'm not filthy like the pigeon. Nope. Life is so short. Why waste it on unimportant things, like taking a bath? What smell? I don't smell anything. And if I do, it's a very normal smell. For a pigeon. (laughs) You know, in some places it is impolite to bathe. All of these flies buzzing around me are purely coincidental. P.U. Yuck. Let's get out of here. Take a bath, dude. (laughs) Even the flies don't want to be around him. Okay, fine. If it means so much to you, I'll take a bath. Whoa. I'm not gonna like this one bit. The water is too hot. Too cold. 
too lukewarm, too hot, too wet, too cold, not enough toys, too many toys, too deep, not deep enough, too cold, now it's too hot again, too reflective, that is still too hot. Well, I guess this is okay. <laughs> hey, this is fun. Wash, 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 washy. I love bubbles. Look at my wrinkly toes. La, 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 singing in the tub. This is the life. Hello. Hello. How are you? I'm fine. I'm a fish. I'm a fish. Ten hours later. Can I stay in the tub forever? Why is this book important? What does it teach you? Because even if you don't want to take a bath, you still need to or you'll be stinky and dirty forever. That's you know, true. You even smell bad at school. People will not like to play with you ever or ever be your friend. So you have to take a bath or you'll be stinky and flies will come around you. That's true. Can beetles? Yeah, beetles can come around. Yeah, it would be they like gross. Stink. It would be gross. And there would be like stink air coming from you. I do not like that. So every day remember, well not every day but some days remember, take a bath.